Hey everybody, welcome back. Yep, it's that time of the week. It is time for your seventh favorite podcast. All right, maybe we're up to five, but probably seven. Uh, welcome back to the week four edition of the Third and Lang podcast. And well, just wouldn't be Third and Lang without that knucklehead. Look at that background. Look at this guy. He's got production value now. Welcome, Matt Lang. You know, I'll stand up. I'll, I'll let you take a look. Okay. Yes, man. Yeah, we're losing you, Matt. <laughs> All right. Well, we're still recording. <laughs> no. You whatever you did, you just as soon as we started, you just completely, completely okay. locked down again. You want to start over? No, just roll. <laughs> I don't okay. I don't start over. So all right, we're back. We're we're working through a few things. Obviously, Matt has done some done some set design, which looks fantastic. Matt, fill us in. Who did the background? A very, very nice interior decorator by the name of Jill. Okay. Who did the banner? Uh, my friends over in the Quad Cities. Okay. Do they have a business, or do they, do they not want to be named and part of the uh, witness uh, protection program? I forgot program. the name of their business, but just friends of, friends of the family. Okay. Fair enough. The banner looks really good. I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I have a few caricatures of me and that, and that might be one of the better ones actually that i've seen so yeah no it looks nice. artistic whoever did that did a really nice job so it's very good we got some thunder thunder and lightning we got <laughs> the x's and o's and the, and yep. the jimmy's and the joe's all right so so i know you wanted to start off you have a, a few statements i guess <laughs> you need to make Fill us yeah no i just i thought i would open up the program with just opening statements you know we're we're in the middle of the season and um, you know, where most teams should kind of have an identity of kind of where they're at, you know, um, and, uh, you know, and I think what's kind of unique right now about our football season is we're going into week four and it feels like we're going into week one with this weather. It's, you know, it's very, very hot, yep. a lot of hot weather. It's not going to change this weekend. And, um, you know, the bottom line is that you enter the middle of the season and, you know, it's not, it shouldn't be a, a boring time of the season, but in a lot of ways, we're kind of waiting a week or a two down right. the road for some major, major uh, matchups. We have a real big matchup in four, uh, four A that we'll talk about, but in all the rest of the classes, everybody's kind of revving their engines and sharpening their knives for games down the road in, in a couple weeks or two or three weeks. Yeah, the schedule's going to get. A little bit tougher, uh, so we're going to have a hot week of football this Friday night, uh, and then um, hey, we get into week five next week. But we, but you know, we got a great week four. We're going to talk about because I'm prepared to talk about all these teams. But uh, the weather is really hot. Opening statement number two: Rantoul football breaks a 41 game losing streak, and they beat Pontiac 21 to 15. So yeah. you want to tip your hat to the Rantoul Eagles. And that, uh, that opening statement is uh, statement number two, the Eagles are flying high. And then number three kind of correlates to what I just said before. You should have an idea of where you're at. And for down here, some of the same teams, the cream is rising, rising to the top. Teams are starting to really rev their engines and get better. Uh, you know, down here, St. Joe Ogden, Salt Fork, Gibson City, Paxton Buckley, Loda, Muhammad, Leroy, Bismarck, Henning, all these teams I'll talk about tonight. Excellent. So again, yeah, it's um, it's conference time. You know that that's what we're in now. We're done with the non-conference play for the most part. You're settling in the conference play, and you know it's it's like this every year, Matt. Some years, some years you have some great matchups, and some years it might take a few weeks. Yep. Some years, and maybe this year's one of the years. Maybe week week eight and week nine will be spectacular. You just just depends how things shake out. But, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned a couple of the upsets because it's kind of been a theme this year. Um, you know, we've seen it definitely in the larger classes. 
this year we're seeing you know loyola loyola academy's one two and eight a i mean i i can't remember the last time they lost two regular season games it's been a while um you know, you've you've got some others as well. Uh, Glenbard West is <laughs> zero three. You've got Maine South at one and two. There's a lot of interesting things going on. I know certainly the larger classes as well as the smaller enrollments as too as well. So which we will get into. Now we will have so Matt. Let's go. Uh, we're going to start with eight A. So we'll go through eight A. And again, we are using uh, our friends at nuicfootball.com. We appreciate their hard work and their rankings. And uh, again, I know AP is uh, kind of back up and operational and yeah, well, good for them. We're going to use NUICfootball.com's rankings because, well, we like them and we like their rankings. So eight man top 10, according to NUICfootball.com is as follows. Uh, number 10, uh, West Carroll, number nine, Flanagan, Cornell, Woodland, number eight is West Central. Seven, Milford, Cisna Park. Six is Pawnee. Five, Ridgewood. Four, Martinsville. Three, Polo. Two, Milledgeville. And one, Amboy. Matt also receiving votes in 8A, South Fork, Bushnell Prairie City, St. Anne, and also South Beloit getting in there. So, Matt, just overall thoughts on class, I'm sorry, and 8A football, eight man football. Yeah, eight man football. So, I mean, I think everybody will just flat out tell you Amboy is probably the team to beat. Um, they have between 40 and 50 guys out for football. Um, their defense and their size makes them really, really tough. They run kind of a four man front. It's a 44 defense concept, but they're just so, so strong, so strong, like on the edges and uh, inside. And then their quarterback, Eddie Jones, is really, really good. And then Quinn uh, Leffelman is their fullback. He's amazing. He's a three-year starter. He's injured right now, but he'll be back in in the next week or two. So they're just going to be really tough to beat. I think the sleeper teams in eight-man are Pawnee and Milford. Those are teams that just continue to get recognition. Uh, You know, Chuck Schwartz over there at Milford, like I said, he's one of the godfathers of eight-man football. And I, I saw them last year. They looked extremely, almost kind of Steve Sarkeesian, Lane Kiffin-ish. They were very, very elusive and very, very uh, uh, creative with their offense. And uh, so they're going to be tough to beat. I think Pat Elder's team at, Ridge, uh, at Ridgewood is going to be tough to beat also. But right now, in eight-man football, Amboy is the team to kind of watch out for. I want you to put this in your notes for next week because I really need to figure this out. And again, folks, by the way, Starting next week, the plan is we're going to start bringing guests in starting next week. So we will. Okay. what I'll do is I will tweet out ahead of time who our guest is going to be. And if people have questions, we'll start taking some questions from, from the X slash Twitter universe if they have any, anything that's, uh, you know, have decent questions. We're more than happy to welcome other people's questions. Um, what I want to know about 8A, 8A, I keep saying 8A, 8-man football. Where are they at numbers wise, and have they increased from a year ago? Good I'm question. Sure if you yeah. know that, but I would love to know that. That's something I think it's important we keep track of for sure. Well, so I'd like to send a shout out to two of my football mentors that helped me in my uh, you know my career coaching high school football. Two guys that I was you know introduced to by by John Elder. You know, one is Pat Elder. Um, you know, and then the elders introduced me to Coley Welder and the rest is history in terms of my, in terms of my, uh, you got it, man. You got it. You caught me. In terms of my path, I was able to got a drink. Uh, got a drink. There, there you go. <laughs> the, the, uh, the elders really treated me well and introduced me to great people. So, you know, Pat elder is someone I look up to, you know, when he was at Richmond Burton, he had great teams and he did a good job. And, you know, both Pat and Jason Kirby, another another person that I was introduced to by John Elder at the coaching clinics, they've done a great job. You know, I mean, when I want information on eight-man football, um, they don't hesitate. Let's just put it that way. They're very quick in getting back information to me. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I always love, I always love when you, uh, Cody Waller, Walter, we, we're all ready. I'm ready for you tonight. So Dangerous. I had a feeling it was going to be a heavy – 
It's going to be a heavy drinking night, so we're all yeah, set and ready to go. Um, we're going to move on to uh, 1A. Let's go through Class 1A. And, and again, uh, we are using the NUICfootball.com ranking state rankings on X. They are NUIC football. By all means, visit them. Tell them we said, uh, said to say hello. So uh, according to the 1A top 10 rankings, uh, we'll give you the others receiving votes. These are schools that just missed out. Casey Westfield received votes. Uh, Rova Williamsfield received votes. Uh, Gibson City, Melvin Sibley received votes. And Rockford Lutheran also received votes in the 1A top 10. Uh, the top 10 is as follows, according to NUICfootball.com. Newman Central Catholic at 10. Aurora Christian at 9. Stark County at 8. Hope Academy at Seven, despite that one and two record. I'll talk about that in a moment. Greenfield Northwestern is at six. Leroy at five. Camp Point Central at four. Calhoun at three. Lena at two. And Altoff at one. Matt, there seems to be, there's been a lot of back and forth, and I've seen a lot of this discussion going on. Kind of seems already we're getting some debate back and forth on who is truly the number one team. Um, I believe AP has Lena at number one this week. I know it just seems like others are kind of going back and forth. Any thoughts? Any dog in that fight for now? Well, or is it you know what? Too early? Well, you, you talk about how uh, most of the non-conference games are done and over with. There's a big game um, this Friday night, and it's Belleville Altoff at Tolono Unity. So we're going to find out kind of what Belleville Altoff's all about. And uh, that'll be interesting because they're coming up to the cathedral in the country and taking on Scott Hamilton's team. And uh, that's a non-conference game. But uh, I'm going to find that. That's going to be really interesting. And in terms of Lena, you know, they're just kind of sharpening their tools right now and getting ready for their week six matchup at Dupec. So in terms of 1A, I mean, you got those two guys up at the top. And I think everybody's kind of, you know, wanting to see a – Sometimes we forget about the southern part of Illinois now that Belleville Altoff is kind of a, you know, a, a, a flavor that we want to talk about because they're a formidable yeah. opponent. Uh, right. We forget about some of the teams over there in the western Illinois Valley, okay? So you have in the north for the western Illinois Valley, you have bigger bigger schools like Camp Point and Jacksonville Route. But in the south, you're going to have your teams like Hardin, Calhoun, Greenfield, Winchester, uh, they are they are all three and zero right now. All three of those teams, uh, one of those teams could come out of there along with Camp Point, along with Belleville Altoff, and be a team in the state championship at Hancock Stadium. Uh, week four, which is you know right here in front of our eyes, we're going to have Harden Calhoun and Winchester playing each other at Harden Calhoun. Harden Calhoun is a team coached by Aaron Elmore that um, you know Harden Calhoun has a storied tradition. And they beat Camp Point Central here a couple weeks ago. Um, watch out for Harden Calhoun. I mean, it's going to be interesting to just see who comes out of there. There's good coaches, too. Uh, Greenfield has that Joe, P Joe Pembroke uh, as a head coach. And then Winchester, a team that I was very familiar with when I was over to Havana, and we were playing during the, the COVID time. We actually canceled the game because we had kids with COVID, and we didn't want to play them because they were just flat out bigger and badder than us, and we just – we weren't going to have the bodies to go over there and take them on. Winchester's 3-0. and It's going to be really interesting. Uh, flipping script, <clears throat> when you go to the heart of Illinois Conference, heart of Central Illinois Conference, you have the small schools in Leroy and Gibson. And like I said, a lot of these teams are kind of sharpening and fine-tuning their engine to get ready for games down the road. For Gibson City, for example, they just came off a big, big win against Warrensburg-Latham. And in weeks six and eight, Gibson City is at Tuscola and at Leroy. Other mm. small schools in that in that small division for the Art of Central Illinois Conference is Hayworth, Hayworth, Warrensburg, and Tuscola. Um, so that that's going to be really interesting to see how that all kind of develops. And then and then up in the north, I wanted to share you've got uh, Hope Academy at number seven, and with a one and two record. And I think a lot of people not, might not realize those two losses came to uh, Wilmington in week one. And then uh, 6A power Chicago Simeon in week two. So, again, Hope Academy playing a really, really tough schedule. They just got their first win over Aurora Christian last week, 22-9. to nine. So, again, 
Uh, you see those first three opponents. Doesn't get any easier this week. Wheaton Academy waits uh, Hope Academy, and Wheaton Academy is going to be a team in 4A that could be a very dangerous playoff team. So, yeah, nothing easier for uh, – And I'm, I'm laughing at you because you're talking about these schools that are playing these bigger schools. And I got yeah. the same note – and I got the notes right here, Tim. I keep forgetting the Central uh, Sterling uh, Newman Central Catholic is 1A, and they're in a 2A, 3A conference. Yeah. And uh, their week five opponent coming down the road is going to be Taylor Ridge Rockridge. Um, so Sterling Newman is in the, uh, the, the the rock division of the three rivers, the three rivers, the, you know. So you have the three, you have the rock division, then you have the Mississippi division. And so we'll talk a little bit more about some of those bigger schools, but Sterling Newman um, – it's Sterling Newman. Yeah, yeah, no doubt for sure. All right, uh, let's move on to two A. We'll let Mac get a little bit of water if he wants there. So we'll move on to two A. Uh, football.com their top ten ranking for Class Two A this week. Uh, we'll start again with the uh, receive votes, but just just missed out a little bit. Uh, Shelbyville receive votes. Chicago Christian receive votes. Pena receive votes, and uh, Bismarck Harding. Uh, also receive votes. Um, here is your top 10 in class 2A. Uh, EPC gets the 10 slot, Moments at 9, Johnston City at 8, Chester at 7, Tri Valley at 6, Bloomington Central Catholic posts their first loss. They're at 5, Rock Ridge at 4, Quincy Notre Dame at 3, Farmington at 2, and no surprise, at number 1. Or all four sites. So there is your top ten. Anything jump out at you there, big fella? Well, I, I will just tell you this: when we start getting into this three A stuff, you know, um, or you know, for a two A, excuse me. Um, Moments is always a team that kind of is a mystery to me, and they're it's a little bit more closer to your neck of the woods, Tim. But yeah, you know, they yeah. they play in the Vermilion County Conference, and if people aren't familiar with the Vermilion County Conference. You know, you have the likes of Mark Dodd at Bismarck Kenny, Guy Goodlove at, South, uh, at Westville. Right now, the three top teams in the Vermilion County are Bismarck Kenny, Salt Fork, who are getting ready to play in week five, and then Moments coached by Wayne Walker. And you can ask anybody every year, Moments is either hero or zero. They're either real good or they're not so good, okay? And I, I say that as politically correct as I can say, but right now they're a team to watch out for. Um in terms of, you know, two way schools, you know, um, you're talking about Bloomington Central Catholic. They have a big one against, uh, again, coming up here against Monticello. And um, it's just going to be really interesting to see how this, how this all kind of falls apart. You know what I'm saying? And two way Bismarck Kenny is a team to watch out for. Evan Parrish is a really good football player for Bismarck Kenny. He had 134 yards and, and a, with a 49 to 14 win over Hoopston. And, um, you know, it's just going to be really interesting to see how that all unfolds. Yeah, no doubt about it. So, again, uh, just kind of the latest going on in, in, in Class 2A, and we will definitely keep track of that as well. Um, moving on, Matt, let's uh, – I will dive into Class 3A here in one second. Let me bring them up here. There we go. All right, according to NUICfootball.com, these are their top ten rankings in Class 3A this week. Others receiving votes. Tolono Unity, Piatone, Eureka, DuCoin and Olympia receiving votes. Number 10, Paxton Buckley Loga at 10, Dupac at 9, Mon Monmouth Roseville at Rock. I can't, why do I keep screwing that up every week? Rose, Rose, Rose. Roseville. I don't want to say, somebody, I want to say Rossville, but it's Roseville. Monmouth Roseville. Williamsville at 7, Seneca at 6, 5, St. Joe Ogden, 4, Princeton, 3, Wilmington. It's going to be interesting to see if Wilmington stays in three and moves over to two. Latest projection from Mr. Susie, I believe, right now has them in two. Montini at number two. Number one, Byron. Matthew, thoughts? Well, you get into, you know, you get into 3A football. I mean, we're talking about some really good conferences, okay? So the Illini Prairie here in our area has St. Joe, Paxson Buckley Loda, Tolono Unity. Uh, BCC and Monticello. So it's going to be really interesting because uh, PBL is coming off a big, big victory over BCC. They would beat them 22 to 21. Uh, Robert Boyd Mentz is a really 
tough, hard-nosed running back. I mean, that was a signature win for Paxton Buckley Loda. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, they should be Paxton Buckley Loda. I talk about them. I know I have family and friends up there. They should be six and zero when they go into week seven, eight, and nine. But their week seven game is at Monticello. Their week eight game is home against Solano, and their week nine game is at St. Joe. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. But again, I talk about these teams. Not that week four is not important. We got a football game to play on Friday night. But in week five, St. Joe, a team that we know is really, really good, is going to be at home against Carterville. And this is the second year of that matchup. And, um, you know, that's a big, 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 big game. So uh, a couple other teams that you kind of talked about, Tim, that we, you know, we forget to talk about in that Three Rivers Conference, not this week is week four, but next week in week five, we have the big matchup, Tim. And that is Princeton at home against Monmouth Roseville. Jeremy Adolphson yep. has the Monmouth Roseville team going really good. He's a very fundamentally sound football coach. Um, they do a great job. Um, in the heart of Illinois, part of Central Illinois Conference, you have the small teams like I talked about earlier with Leroy and Gibson City and Hayworth and Fisher and all those. But in the big division, you have Clinton, you have Eureka, and you have Tri-Valley. Uh, Clinton is a team to watch at, Watch right now. These teams are all 3-0 and or 2-1. and Tri-Valley just got beat by Leroy. But um, Leroy uh, or Clinton is going to be taking on Eureka and Tri-Valley in weeks five and week six. So there's going to be some shakeup in that conference and I think in the 3A, conference, 3A standings. So, again, we always have these neat, neat storylines and stuff like that. But uh, I did not have the chance to go down to Williamsville this Friday night. Uh, well, let's let's looking, talk was, about Let's talk about I was working that. really late, and I was tired. But I don't think I missed too much because I think that motor got running real hot, and they came out of the gates, and they really imposed their will on Williamsville. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. It was uh, it was kind of a no doubter, and uh, again, uh, kudos to Channel fourteen fifty down in Springfield. I thought they did a great job covering it. They had a nice interview with Aaron Kuntz afterwards, and he talked about us. <laughs> he quoted he quoted me actually in the uh, in the uh, in our preview when I said that you know, win, lose, or draw, it's kind of like a bonus from the football gods that all of a sudden this week three game falls in your lap. And thank you, Coach Koontz, for, for, for giving me a quote on that. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, you obviously you don't want to lose, and you don't want to lose 41-3. to three, But, you know, Matt, I think you'd rather know now what you're getting into as opposed to maybe hoping and wishing and kind of thinking what it is. You've battled the beast already. I think you're a better team if you run into them a second time this year. Hey, and here's the deal. There's a lot of football left to be played here, okay? So you're not taking it. You can't take anything away from Williamsville for putting their chin strap on nice and tight. And I like to just tell Coach, you know, Aaron, thank you, because I had the I had the whole full Monty set up for me. I was going to be sitting in the press box, and, and he was going to take care of me, but I, uh, I kind of chickened out. I've been doing my driver's ed down there all day in the morning, and I, I kind of pooped out, and uh, so I apologize for that, but you know, Byron and Jeff have a very, very tough, tough team. Uh, again, they they're, got they're unbelievable. Play. They're unbelievable. They're unbelievable. I mean, they're unbelievable. The they Conterine have, kids out hurt, gonna be out hurt for a while. Throws a freshman in the lineup, and away they go. Unreal. And they're 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 gonna have a you know a tough matchup against North Boone, but I think we would be remiss to not saying that, I mean, all eyes are pointing to three and O Dixon and three and O Byron yeah. meeting up in week, week eight at Dixon. And, you know, if you can remember that game and this is again, we're talking way down the road guys. So I apologize, but uh, we have 90 degree heat Friday for football games and just down the road, it's going to get rainy and it's going to get nasty. And I can remember that week eight game that was at Byron and yeah. uh, it was a monsoon. So, the cold weather and the and the rain's coming, but uh, again, like I opened up with the opening statements, uh, we got some big big games coming up in weeks five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Well, what's going to be intriguing about about Dixon and, and Byron is just the clash of styles. I mean, 
Dixon's throwing the ball all over the field again this year, and Byron is Byron. So, you know, you're going to have two completely opposite teams and both fighting for that same conference championship. Fingers crossed that it works out that way. They both go in, you know, uh, undefeated in the conference. Um, yeah, so that, that could be one heck of a game. That could be a top game really statewide if things fall the way they sh- we're hoping that they do. So it should be interesting. All right, uh, we'll get into foray. I will use, I don't know, should I use AP or use my own? I guess we will uh, – uh, we'll use AP. So according to AP in Class 4, the top 10 this week is as follows. Rochester at 1, St. Lawrence at 2, Bree Central at 3, Dixon at 4, IC Catholic at 5, St. Vider at 6, Mount Zion at 7, Greenville at 8, Wheaton Academy at 9, and Mantino at 10. Yeah, there's a there's a couple I, 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 I tend to disagree with there, but I always disagree with AP polls, so that's that's pretty standard. Um, so tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, and I keep saying tomorrow night. Friday night, I will be in. Uh, I will be in lovely Chatham for Glenwood hosting Rochester. Should be a great game. And again, as we all know, Derek Leonard working. Derek Leonard working more magic with a quarterback, rotating quarterbacks now, and, and he's just bringing kids in and continues to win games. And there's a guy, another guy that just absolutely amazed me. How he's able to just adjust and adapt and, and continue to keep things rolling. Amazing. Well, you know, here here they 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 loaded their schedule up early with Simeon, and then they lose in week two and they come back and really in a typical Rochester, you know, statement game, went over to Lincoln and just, you know, beat the you know what out of them and tip your hat off to Lincoln. Their football program was getting turned around, but you know, it's kind of, it's a David versus a Goliath there in that matchup. And now this will be interesting. You know, you're at Chatham. Um, it's right down the road. It's a rivalry game. Um, Derek has a lot of respect for Chatham and what they've done over the years. And it's going to be really interesting. You now, and I think another, another team that you could kind of just think about talking about and getting used to, and I brought this up briefly earlier in the year, and that's Bree Central and Brian Short. You know, we always look and see who's going to be that team down south that can maybe – is there someone down here that can go toe-to-toe with Rochester? And from the talks of people, you know, Bree Central may have that team. We, we don't know. It's still early. They're 3-0, yeah. and and they have a big, big matchup at Freeburg. And so we'll be interested to see how they're doing. But right now uh, they've been in control of all their games and uh, – I know Brian, he's done a good job down there, and uh, I worked with him a little bit when he was in, in the Illinois High School Football Coaches Association. So uh, it's going to be interesting, you know, uh, Mount Zion. They've taken an early loss, too. You know, will they yeah. bounce back from that, yeah. you know? Uh, that, you know, that's a that's a big, big, big program that Patrick does down there. And um, so we're going to be finding out what happens here in week four and how it all unfolds because we know there's a top team up at the top, but uh, – you know, last year we had some surprises in 4A. You know, we had a surprise participant in the state championship game against uh, Rochester, and that was neat and interesting. So we'll see how it all unfolds uh, from the, you know, from Rockford to Carbondale. Something's going to happen. You talk about you talk about Mount Zion and, and the loss that they took, and I'm looking at that conference, and and you know, obviously one of the teams a little bit bigger in enrollment, but certainly in that conference is Muhammad Seymour, and. You saw the numbers they put up the first two weeks offensively, and now all of a sudden in week three they lose twenty-one to thirteen to Sycamore. But let me tell you, folks, that is a quality opponent in the Spartans, and that is a five A state title contending program. So, I give I give uh, John Atkins and his staff and and his program a lot of credit, Matt, for you know scheduling a team like like Sycamore that's an absolute maha- uh, just. An absolute behemoth and uh, just a really, really good program. Great, so again, great. We had a great I, – I, I had people there at the game that were texting me. Incredible lights out, awesome atmosphere at Muhammad. They know how yeah. to cook. They know how to perform. They know how to do it. They have a nice grass field there. Sycamore came down, very polished outfit. Uh, kind of tip your hat off to Muhammad. I think their wide receiver, their top wide receiver, hurt his ACL in that game. 
Uh, mm-hmm. He was the kid that caught all the passes in the first week uh, uh, with yeah. their big win, record-setting game. Uh, I can't think of his name, but uh, I'll oh yeah, is it Tyler? Yeah, um, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll find it. Peters. Um, yeah, Tyler Peters. Yeah, yeah. Tight yeah, end, right here. I know he's getting some recruiting interest too. So he got um, he got hurt in that game. Um, Muhammad did a great job. I mean, oh, yeah. Hey, a, you hold. Sycamore, Sycamore has a game changer. I mean, they have a legit dude on the other side of the ball, offensively and defensively. Yeah, that's Burke, going to the University Burke of Goucher. Iowa. Yeah, Burke Goucher. He, he's the real yeah. deal. And yeah, but the reason we're talking about Muhammad is we, we go back to this Apollo Conference. I mean. You know, from Effingham to, to everybody, you know, to Muhammad, Mount Zion, good, solid coaching, good, solid football, and um, tip your hat off. I mean, everybody, everybody down there knows how to coach, and they got good facilities, and the kids play hard. Yeah, and, and again, it's, you, you never, you know, I know how coaches love when everyone mentions a quality loss, and they kind of roll their eyes, but it's kind of a quality loss. It's a, it's a quality opponent you played. You might not play a better opponent than you played against Sycamore. We'll see. Well, again, game that makes you better. Joe Ryan's been there for about 20 years. Uh, I can't, I don't know Joe real well, but I obviously know his brother Pat very well. And I will just tell you this uh, tip your hat off to Muhammad Seymour and Coach Atkins because they came off a heartbreaking two and a half, three hour trip down to Highland where they lost in overtime 42 to 41. And then you got to come back and you have to lick your wounds and you're taking on, uh, you know, the Sycamore outfit with a, with a dude that's going to the University of Iowa and they held their own, you know, so uh, they're yeah. battle tested there. They're one and two. Now they get to come back here in week four and hopefully get a victory. You mentioned you mentioned the weather. Let's talk about this. I'm sure you've got something else you want to share as well. But, you know, so we're going into week four and we've been dealing with the hot really all, all year long. It, it seems like it, it is just, I think we had one, didn't we have one, maybe week two, at least up here was relatively normal, a little cool. Yeah. As a coach, I mean, do you do anything differently? Are you just kind of making sure they're hydrating continuously? Are you, are you setting up your practices differently? Are you practicing later than you generally would based on the weather? Well, I always, I always tried to kind of, you know, as the season's going on, you know, you can kind of scale back a little bit. You're not, you, you, you know, you can't go bone versus bone and, and bang versus bang and right. hit each other yep. because it's just unhealthy and it's unrealistic, you know. And I, I remember Paul Connor talking to me about that when he was talking about wing tee football. He's like, he's like, gosh dang, you know, how many times are you going to run? you know, buck sweep and do down blocks and you're going to pound each other. He's like, take the freaking pants off, you know, take the shoulder pads off, run stuff on air, get your alignment and your assignment down, shorten your practice a little bit. Kids get tired. They're now getting into school. Um, the, it's, it's now dark at four thirty, five o'clock. It's, it's, uh, my, my best friend over at Monticello, Cole Walter. Frank. He does an unusual thing on Wednesdays. He has practice in the morning, early in the morning. He splits it up and they get there at six o'clock in the morning and they go to about seven 30. Yeah. Then yep. when he comes, when they come back out there for Wednesday afternoon, they're there from three 30 to five and they're gone. It gets them out of there. That way they're not dragging and having a three hour practice on a Wednesday because they already had, you know, and he taught me this a long time ago. He's like, Matt, make sure that you make Tuesday a tough Tuesday. And you call it tough Tuesday for a reason. You know, you yep. can kind of, you can chew on their butt a little bit. You can pound them a little bit. Get all that physical stuff out of there. And then let them know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's rain. There's a, there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And, uh, you know, Wednesday should not be, should not be, uh, I always call it an iron Wednesday. You know, you're going to iron out the wrinkle, you know, you know iron out the wrinkles. And then Thursday, Thursday they're they're rip roaring ready to go anyway because they're not thinking about football. They're thinking about what they're going to have for the team meal, you know. So, you know, it, it's uh, that, that that will not change in one A through eight A. On Thursday, they're thinking about yep. talking to their girlfriend and what's going to be for the team meal on Thursday night. Yeah, absolutely, no doubt about it. What else? Anything else on the top of that head of yours you want to get out here? 
Hey, all I know is that third and Lang, the wheels are rotating now. I got it all going. I got all my papers here. See, I got papers, notes, ready to go. I got the banner. I'm going to get a little, Move little backdrop. Get a little backdrop. I might, uh, you know, just uh, work hard here and just build it up. I mean, when you get into week four or week five, you should know what your team's all about. I remember being asked that a long time ago by one of my friends at the News Gazette, and they, they asked me, you know, one time, I was like, you're in week four, week five. You should have some sort of identity, and you should be where you're at. You don't want to be playing great football, but you should know kind of where you're, what your bell cow is and where you're at. Hopefully, you're avoiding injuries. Uh, be interesting how this heat plays up, and then who knows, and Illinois will probably have a snowstorm next week. You never know. Welcome to Illinois. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think that's probably going to do it. We are going to Big come back. Friday night football game for uh, for Illinois at Nebraska this Friday night. I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, don't get me fun, started. Bro. Don't get me started. Don't what? get me What's started. What? Talk to me. Friday is for oh, high I school know, know, football. Don't get me started. I don't I want to get in I, trouble. But okay, it's fine. Listen, that's for okay. Take a big deep breath. Like I tell my driver, it's, pro, there. it's pro sports now. It's okay. They're professionals. It's professional football now. It's okay. Yeah. My point is this. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. No, you're right. You're right. Not. But here, here's the problem. First of all, you got to smell the flowers, blow out the candles, <laughs> relax, relax. Yep. yep. Our, our viewership, our, our eyeballs, and what we watch on television dictate what's going to happen with those colleges, which is now pro football with NIL and Transfer Portal. It's yep. pro football or yep. semi-pro football, and it influences everything. OK, yeah, uh, it does tomorrow night because tomorrow night on Amazon television, which Amazon rules the world now, we're going to have a football game. So I agree with you. Friday night should be sacred. It should be for high school kids and high school kids only. But we're in a different world now, Mr. Tim. Yeah, we are. We are, sadly. But no, that's OK. I, I'm with it you. Is, it is sad. It, this Illinois, is very sad. Illinois. I don't like it. Illinois is playing well. NIU is playing well. So it's a good time to be a college football fan here in the state of Illinois. I know my Salukis are ranked like seven, I think, now in FCS. So it's a good time. It's a good time to be a, a college football fan here in the state of Illinois. I just don't like when you play on Friday. That's it. I'm not going to say anything more. We're going to leave it at that. But um, yeah. go ahead, Pat. If All I right. My head, and with that, that, with that breaking up, with his Wi-Fi breaking up, his Wi-Fi did pretty good for about about thirty-five minutes or so. But uh, we're gonna wrap it up here. So again, come back next week. We will have a special guest on the show. We will get everything worked out and the bells and whistles put together, and uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll. So for the coach Matt Lang, I'm Edgy Tim. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will be back same place, same time next week, same goofy podcast that you come to know and love. So, Fat, I'm Edgy. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.